This is not your basic fast food is unhealthy video. We're gonna go through the 15 most unhealthy fast food options based on science, not just based on how many calories are in something. That absolutely matters. Obviously fast food is bad because of the caloric density, but I wanna focus on fast food items that have ridiculous amounts of trans fats. Trans fats are arguably the one thing that all different nutrition categories and mindsets agree on to be something terrible. Heavily linked to metabolic disorder, heavily linked to type two diabetes, heavily linked to visceral fat, heavily linked to inflammation. Like we're talking bad news, okay? So let's go ahead and dive right into the first one that is one that maybe you haven't heard of before, but it's worth mentioning because it's so dang ridiculous. And if you're from the South or you've been to the South, you've heard of what is called Captain D's. Their seafood platter, first of all, has almost 8,000 milligrams of sodium, but this isn't necessarily a sodium video, so let's keep going. It has almost 4,000 calories. Okay, I think we can all acknowledge that that's a little extreme but we're talking 16 grams of trans fats. Here's the deal with trans fats. Okay, you have trans fats that can be what are called ruminant trans fats that come from certain kinds of meats. Those our bodies can process and handle. But then you have other trans fats that come as a result of chemically altering fats or putting them through so much processing that it literally changes the makeup of them so that the body cannot deal with them. It cannot break down what are called these CIS bonds. And when that happens, trans fats take a tremendously long time to clear. So they store differently, they trigger different immune responses in the body. So you should be aiming to have uh, zero trans fats per day. 16 grams is over the top. But this seafood platter also has 262 grams of total fat and 211 grams of carbohydrates. Now I wanted to start with the most extreme one, but I wanna move into ones that are a little bit more popular, ones that you might have heard of if you're just from anywhere in the world. Let's start with the McDonald's Grand Mac. So you've got the regular Big Mac, but then you go one step up, you've got what is called the Grand Mac. Now with this, you're looking between eight and 900 calories, so obviously still a total calorically dense nightmare, but you're looking at two grams of uh, total trans fats, again, doesn't sound like a lot, but considering you should have zero, two grams is a lot for just a regular burger. And what people don't realize is because of the sauces that are on this burger, there's also 13 grams of sugar. You wouldn't think that a burger would have that much sugar, but between all the sauces and everything else they're putting on it, 13 grams of sugar. Then we move across the street, we go over to Shake Shack. Okay, they've got their Lockhart Link Burger. This one's quite interesting. Almost 1,200 calories in this sucker. Once again, two and a half grams of trans fats. Okay, but then you've got over 4,500 milligrams of sodium. Now, is salt the end of the world? No, but when it's unopposed and you don't have potassium, you don't have magnesium to counteract it, it's problematic. But is that really that high? Well, when you compare this Lockhart burger to the Grand Mac, the Grand Mac only has 1,400 milligrams of sodium. So the point is, why is this one such a sodium bomb? Is it the bacon they're using? What is it? So when you combine the sodium with the trans fats, this makes the list as something you should just avoid. Then we still stay at Shake Shack and we look at their shake and we look at their chocolate birthday cake shake. This one is really wild. You've got 96 grams of sugar in one shake. You have 41 grams of saturated fat in one shake. When you combine high amounts of sugar and high amounts of saturated fat, you put yourself into a ridiculous state of overnutrition, of overfeeding, because you have these two different systems. Obviously the system that's registering carbohydrates and the system that's registering fats. And when you're at this already like extreme net surplus, the combination of high saturated fat and the combination of high sugar is an insulin resistance nightmare. Now also, ironic enough that there's two and a half grams of trans fats in a milkshake. That is unrealistic. If you were to make a milkshake at home with just regular ice cream and regular milk, you wouldn't have any trans fats. So what's going on here? Like what is happening with the ingredients that's making it so twisted? Anyhow, I digress. Then we go to the Popeye's Cajun fries. You're thinking, okay, it's the burgers that have all this trans fats, so that's the problem, right? Not necessarily, like burgers are naturally going to have ruminant trans fats. 
It's the fact that they're cooking them in these weird oils and whatnot. So you opt for the fries, though, in this case, because you think, okay, that's going to lessen things. Er, not the case. So Popeye's happens to fry in canola and palm oil. Okay, because of this, you've got a pretty unstable oil. And when they heat this to a high degree, you end up with oxidized fats. So not only do you have pretty much damaged fats coming into your system that can ultimately disrupt DNA, you also have a fair bit of trans fats as well. So in this case, you have three and a half grams of trans fats, more than you would with burgers. Plus, you've got a bunch of refined starches that are spiking your insulin alongside it. So it's not exactly a good choice. You're better off literally going with just chicken than you are with their actual fries. Okay, get ready for a wild one, the Sonic Oreo Blast Milkshake. We're talking almost 1800 calories in a literal milkshake, like something that you can just suck down in a couple of minutes. This disrupts your gut incretins already because you're absorbing something so fast, you don't have a chance for CCK, cholecystokinin, you don't have a chance for GLP-1, PYY to actually register and send signals to the brain properly. So you don't even feel full when you consume something almost 2000 calories. But check this out. There's two grams of trans fats, 150 grams of sugar, okay? And we're talking over 90 grams of fat. Literally as much fat as 28 strips of bacon in a milkshake. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Let's stay at Sonic for a second. Okay, the supersonic double bacon cheeseburger. What's funny is it's smaller than a Whopper and it's smaller than a lot of these other burgers, but it has 87 grams of fat in it. That's what's interesting. Smaller than a Whopper. Why is there twice as much or three times as much fat than some of these other burgers. That's what we have to look at. It's like, okay, I'm all for rolling through a fast food joint and getting a burger patty. I'm all for rolling through in and out and grabbing a burger patty if you need to, if you need to go through Chick-fil-A and get a chicken breast or whatever, I get it. But what's going on with the Sonic burgers? Why is there so much fat in them and possibly so much trans fats? Hmm, sounds like Sonic might just be a place to stay away from. Okay, this is a weird one. I had actually never heard of Bojangles before, but Bojangles is a place in another area of the United States, don't really get them too much in California. They have their mac and cheese. Now, on the surface, this is a perfect example of what could be a problem. Okay, you've got something that is like 200 calories. Okay, 200 calories, but 14 grams of fat, which isn't bad, right? Seven of those grams of fat are trans fats. Half of the actual fats in this mac and cheese are trans fats. So ridiculous, plus it's a small serving, so a lot of times people end up ordering one or two or three because it's really just a small side. Here's what's wild about Five Guys. Five Guys has decent burgers, but you have to be careful with some of the other things. So their bacon cheeseburger ends up having two grams of trans fats in it, plus over a thousand calories, but the problem seems to be with the garnishing. So something in their sauce, in their mayonnaise, is bringing the trans fats up. So Five Guys doesn't seem to be too big of a problem if you just go straight up and get the burger patties. Now, who knows about the cheeses? Because they're not always real cheeses. But if you're looking for just straight up meat, yeah, a Five Guys burger patty might not be bad. I also put a link down below if you like to kind of cook your own beef and you like beef, you like burgers. Obviously, grass-fed, grass-finished beef is the way to go. So I put a link down below for ButcherBox. Trust me, if you wanna make your own burgers that are top notch with good quality stuff, you wanna check out ButcherBox. They'll deliver all the meat to your doorstep. They are the top notch, super good quality, delicious tasting, grass fed, grass finished, steaks, ground beef, ground bison, all of that stuff. Not to mention chickens, scallops, all these other things as well. But when you're talking taste, they are the best, I'm telling you that. And everything gets delivered to your doorstep, so it's super easy. So that link down below will get you to ButcherBox. And you can also check out custom boxes and all this other stuff. They have all kinds of cool promos, like free ground beef for life. So if you order through them, you can get free ground beef for life. So as long as your subscription is going, you're getting free ground beef every month with your box. You can also check out what I typically select with my boxes as well. So a big shout out to them. And again, that link is in the top line of the description right underneath this video. So if you're wanting to go to fast food because you want a burger, okay, there's nothing wrong with a burger but try to make it at home with the good quality stuff whenever you can. So link below. Okay, Cheesecake Factory. Not really fast food, but it has what they call their brulee French toast. This sucker has five times the recommended value of saturated fat. We're talking north of 70 grams. 
Not that I necessarily think the RDA is what we should 100% be paying attention to, but that's a lot of saturated fat in one sitting. It has 2,180 calories, four grams of trans fat, and it has as much sugar as five Snickers bars. So it's like, I'm gonna start my day off with a light breakfast, just get a little bit of French toast. Okay, well you pretty much have all your calories for the day and you may as well, you'd actually be better off just sitting down and having five Snickers bars because at least your fat intake and your calorie intake would be a little bit less. Okay, this is where things get interesting. If you've ever been to a Whataburger before, they've got some really cool options. And one of them is their mushroom Swiss burger, which sounds like it's the better option, right? Because you're like, Okay, there's mushrooms on it, at least there's some fiber, at least there's some beta-glucans, there's, there, there's a little bit of a vegetable on there. What's wild about this is that there's a lot of trans fats considering what it is. So we have two grams of trans fats in this, 61 grams of carbohydrates, it's one of the higher carbohydrate burgers. What's interesting is that if you look at other options on their menu, like their bacon cheeseburger, there's 360 less calories in their bacon cheeseburger and even less trans fats. This is what's wild. This, this is where you need to have this kind of information, right? You're choosing the mushroom Swiss burger because it's seemingly better, but their bacon cheeseburger is actually less calorie and better for you. Talking about the Burger King Bacon King, just gonna hit this one really quick. Almost four grams of trans fats. Again, you should be having zero. I don't think I can get the point across strongly enough that these trans fats are like the one thing that we can link to so much in the way of metabolic disease like they should not be there. So one gram is terrible. Almost four grams in a single burger, no. Okay, let's stay at Burger King for a little bit. Their triple stacker, okay, we're talking 2,300 calories in a burger. That's about how much you should be having in a day on average. And we're looking at five grams of trans fats. So what is it about Burger King? I don't, Burger King just seems to have higher trans fats foods. So what I would recommend is going to Carl's Jr. and maybe going for like their grass fed, their natural burger, which is gonna be lower trans fats. And you can ask for them to cook it dry where they don't add any extra oil. And I've done that quite a few times. It's still not the tastiest burger. I'm not gonna lie, a Burger King burger tastes a little bit better, but Carl's Jr. has some decent options and they're a little bit cleaner in my opinion. Okay, this one you've probably heard before, one of my favorites to make fun of because I don't know, it's just funny. The Outback Steakhouse Bloomin' Onion. It's not really fast food, it's still a sit down joint, but still matters. Seven grams of trans fats in this sucker. Okay, here's what's messed up. They literally fry this stuff in hydrogenated oil. Like they're one of the few establishments that just doesn't care. They seem to just, we're gonna fry in straight up hydrogenated oil. Like they don't use canola oil. I mean, that's not even that great in my opinion. They don't use soybean oil. They're like, no, we're gonna use hydrogenated oil. For all I know, maybe that's because they're not even cleaning out their, their oil. Like they're just, <laughs> that is pure trans fat that they're cooking in. I'm talking 123 grams of carbohydrates, by the way. We're talking about 2,000 calories, and we're talking between four and 5,000 milligrams of sodium too. So hopefully you're not sitting down and eating a whole one of these to yourselves, but they're not that, that big. Like if you got one, easily two people could clean one of these things out. And then the last one that we need to touch on is going to be the Wendy's Dave's Triple still one of the highest saturated fat foods and trans fat foods that is in the burger world of fast food. What it is about it, not really sure. We're looking between four and five grams of trans fats. So just to give you a few other options, McDonald's, generally speaking, as far as their burger patties are concerned, are not half bad. So if you just get a straight burger patty from McDonald's without the other stuff on it, not the end of the world. That might be a better option. Okay, same kind of thing like I mentioned, if you have in and out nearby, they do use relatively good meat. The cheese is still questionable. I, I know they say it's like all cheese, real cheese, whatever. I just, I'm always concerned about what's really in that. So again, straight up burger patties from there are gonna be great. Uh, you, Although you're not getting real chicken breast a lot of times when you go to fast food joints, like a lot of times there's soy, there's other things added into it. Chick-fil-A is legit chicken breast, so you can do that. Even if you go to McDonald's and you just ask for like a grilled chicken sandwich and you just ditch the bread and ditch the sauce and go for the chicken breast. I mean, when you're looking at time and you're trying to get things done, I get that. And fast food's gonna be a little bit quicker, but you still can't just indulge in the stuff that's going to leave you hanging for years down the road. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. See you tomorrow.